Hello and welcome to another video of Matuklasan and in this video, we'll talk about variance, standard deviation, and range which are all measures of variation. And before we start our lesson, let's consider this situation. In a hospital where each patient's pulse rate is taken 3 times a day, that of patient A is 72, 76, and 74 beats per minute while that of patient B is 72, 91, and 59 bits per minute. The mean pulse rate of the two patients is the same, which is 74 bits per minute. So, does that mean they are both stable? No, because we need to observe their difference in variability. Notice that the pulse rate of patient P fluctuates widely, whereas patient A's pulse rate is stable. Now, suppose that you are a purchasing agent for a large manufacturing firm and that you regularly place orders with two different suppliers. After several months of operation, you find that the mean number of days required to fill the orders is 10 days for both of the suppliers. Although the mean number of day is 10 for both suppliers, do the two suppliers demonstrate the same degree of reliability in terms of making deliveries on schedule? So looking at the variability in delivery times indicated by the histograms, which supplier would you prefer? For most firms, receiving materials and supplies on schedule is important. So the 7 or 8 deliveries shown for J.C. Clark distributors may be viewed favorably. However, a few of the slow 13 to 15 day deliveries could be disastrous in terms of keeping a workforce busy and production on schedule. So this example illustrates a situation in which the variability in the delivery times is more favorable which would make Dawson Supply the preferred supplier. In addition to central tendency, every data set can be characterized by its variation and shape. Variation measures the spread or dispersion of values in a data set. Some commonly used measures of variability are the range, variance, and standard deviation. One simple measure of variation is the range, the difference between the largest and smallest values. The symbol R is used for the range. For example, the data below shows the calories per serving of 7 breakfast cereals. Compute the range of the number of calories. The first thing that we need to do here is to identify the highest value in the data set. In this case, it's 190. The lowest value in the data set is 70. So subtracting these two values will give us the range of the data set. 190 minus 70 is 120. The range measures the total spread in the set of data. However, it does not take into account how the data are distributed between the smallest and the largest values. In other words, the range does not indicate whether the values are evenly distributed throughout the dataset, clustered near the middle or clustered near one or both extremes. Thus, using the range as a measure of variation when at least one value is an extreme value is misleading. And that is why we have the variance, which is the measure of variability that utilizes all the data. The formula for the population variance is sigma squared equals summation of x minus mu quantity squared over n. The Greek letter mu here represents the population mean, while capital N represents the population size. Remember that sigma squared is just a symbol, so you don't need to square the answer when you use this formula. And if you would like to get the variance of your sample, you can use the formula 
s squared equals summation of x minus x bar quantity squared over n minus 1. Notice here that x are also the individual values in the given, while x bar is just the representation of the sample mean. And small n here represents the sample size. So they're almost alike, right? So the only difference is the denominator where here in the popula population variance, we have capital N and here we have N minus 1. For example, a data set contains the following seven values. Find the population and sample variance. So here, what we need to do is to compute for the mean. So, by using the formula for the mean, adding this data will have 30. And since we have 7 in the data set, we will divide it by 7. So, 30 divided by 7 is 4.29. So, the mean for the population is 4.29. We will also use the same formula in the sample mean. So, the answer is also 4.29. No problem with the mean, right? After getting the mean, we will just subtract the mean from each of this data value. So I got 1.71 here by subtracting 6 and the mean of 4.29. Again, for you to get the value of a negative 2.29 here, I just need to subtract 2 with 4.29. Doing this will give you this column. The next step is to square each of these values for us to get this next column. So by squaring 1.71, I got 2.92. By squaring 4.71, we have 22.18. So notice here that negative values are always squared. So we always have a positive variance. So, after get completing this column, all you need to do is to add the values in this column for us to get the summation of x minus mu quantity squared. So, 43.3 was based in the total of this column. So, adding these values will give us 43.43. .43. After getting the summation of x minus mu squared, we just need to divide it to n now for us to get sigma squared. n, as we all know, is equal to 7 because we have 7 in the data set. So 43.43 divided by 7 will give us the answer of 6.2. So the variance for this data set is 6.2. How about the sample variance? It's just the same. We just need to find or change the symbol mu to x bar because we refer to the sample mean. And then, changing the denominator from capital N to N minus 1. Since N is still 7, then the sample variance for the data is 7.24. You just need to divide 43.43, which is the same value as in the previous example. And you just need to subtract 7 uh, with 1, and then you have here 6. So 43.43 .43 divided by 6 is 7.24. So the sample variance for the data is 7.24. The next type of measure of variation is the standard deviation, which is just the square root of the variance. So if you want to get the population standard deviation, all you need to do is to get the square root of your population variance. And if you want to get the sample standard deviation, you just need to get the square root of the sample variance. In the previous example, since the population variance is 6.2, then the square root of 6.2 is 2.49. So the standard deviation for the population is 2.49. Now, if the sample variance is 7.24 in the previous example, square root of 7.24 is 2.69. So, the sample standard deviation is 2.69. As previously stated, variances and standard deviations can be used to determine the spread of the data. 
If the variance or standard deviation is large, the data are more dispersed. This information is useful in comparing two datasets to determine which is more variable. The measures of variance and standard deviation are also used to determine the consistency of a variable. For example, in the manufacture of fittings, such as nuts and bolts, the variation in the diameters must be small or the parts will not fit together. The variance and standard deviation are used to determine the number of data values fall within a specified interval in a distribution. And finally, the variance and standard deviation are used quite often in inferential statistics. So make sure to subscribe for our future content about different distributions and inferential statistics. Okay? Let's have another example. A testing lab wishes to test two experimental brands of outdoor paint to see how long each will last before fading, so our variable time will be in terms of months. The testing lab chose six gallons of each paint to test from each of the two brands. If you're the customer, which brand will you choose based from the results? So here, under the first paint of brand A, the paint faded after 10 months. The second paint faded after 60 months. In brand B, the first paint that was chosen faded after 35 months, and the second one faded after 45 months. Now, since six gallons were chosen from each of the two brands, we will consider this dataset as samples. Getting the means of the two brands will give us 35 months. Now, since the means are equal, you might conclude that both brands of paint last equally well. However, when the data sets are examined properly, different conclusion might be drawn. Because even though the means are the same for both brands, the spread or variation is quite different. Thus, we're going to use variance or standard deviation. Following the procedures in our previous example a while ago, we will get a sample variance of 350 and a standard deviation of 18.71 for brand A. For brand B, we will get a sample variance of 50 and a standard deviation of 7.07. .07. Always remember that the smaller the spread of dispersion of the data, the smaller the range, variance, and standard deviation. And since B or brand B has a smaller variance and standard deviation, thus brand B performs more consistently. So if you're the customer, we'll choose brand B. Whenever two samples have the same units of measure, the variance and standard deviation for each can be compared directly. But what if we need to compare the variance of two measures with different units? Unlike the measures of variation presented previously, the coefficient of variation is a relative measure of variation that is always expressed as a percentage rather than in terms of the units of the particular data. So the coefficient of variation, denoted by the symbol CV or CVAR, measures the scatter in the data relative to the mean. For the sample, we use CVAR equals S, which stands for the standard deviation of the sample, and XVAR, which is the mean of the sample, times 100%. For the population, we have CVAR, sigma, divided by mu. Sigma represents the population standard deviation, and mu represents the mean of the population, times 100%. Let's have this example. The mean of the number of sales of cars over a 3-month period is 72. The standard deviation is 4. The mean of the commissions is 130,225 pesos and the standard deviation is 19,325. Compare the variations of the two. Referring to the number of sales and commissions. Now, since we are comparing two measures with different units, we will use coefficient of variation. For the car sales, CVAR is just equal to 4 divided by 72 because 4 is the standard deviation and 72 is the mean. Times 100, we have 5.56%. For the commissions, we have CVAR equals 
19,325 because this is the sample standard deviation for the commission and 130,225 for the mean of the commission times 100%, it's equal to 14.84%. So in terms of uh, dispersion, commission varies greatly over the car sales, which has only 5.56% of coefficient variation and that's all for this video if you want more lessons in business statistics make sure to check my playlist in the description below and don't forget to like share and subscribe for your updates see you in the next video